So today I'm hanging out at Truckee Tahoe Airport, California. Hanging out here with Kevin Quinn, and we'll give you a quick tour of his aircraft, all the mods he's done. I'll tell you all about his airplane coming up. All right, Kevin, so give us a tour of your aircraft, if you could, and tell us a little bit about what you've done to it over the years. A little tour of my hangar. Welcome, Brian, Experimental Aircraft Channel, all of you at home. Hopefully I don't bore you with my content here, but this is my, uh, my Black Beast, my Carbon Cub. It's a hermaphrodite. It's a 2018, I have to date myself, make sure I don't get carried away, or exaggerate, 2018 FX Carbon Cub, but it is sort of a hermaphrodite of sorts, uh, as you'll learn as we go along here. Big picture, long story short, top cub tail feathers, vertical and horizontal is a little bigger than your standard Carbon Cub. I've got SS wings, meaning uh, a couple less ribs in each wing as opposed to the traditional FX and or EX you get. So again, weight. Uh, i got two 12-gallon tanks up there, uh, so I'm 24 total. I do have the carbon fiber fuel pot on the bottom. This thing weighs right at about 15 pounds empty. I can carry around 15 pounds all day, uh, but it does provide 30 gallons of fuel. So you take that 30 with the 24 up there, all of a sudden you got 50 plus gallons of fuel, cruise around at six, seven gallons an hour. I can fly for a lot longer than my bladder can take. Uh, a couple of my favorite mods, obviously, uh, for this aircraft in particular, you gotta have bush wheels. Where we go flying, we land in places, sometimes watermelon patches, sometimes at 10,000 feet, sometimes on river bottoms, deep sand. The 35s, there's nothing like them. They also make for a great climbing platform for my kids. Um, <laughs> I recently put on the Behringer wheels and brakes and masters inside, and I can tell you it's probably one of the better upgrades I've ever done to my aircraft. Braking power is absolutely incredible. Uh, not to take anything away from the others that I had, uh, but I could never go full run up, 2850 RPM just wouldn't hold. Now I can get 2850, all I can get, full throttle. It wants to put itself on its nose, I have to be careful. These Behringer brakes are incredible. Uh, Behringer wheels, brakes, and master the whole system. I can't thank those guys enough. It's just, it's an incredible deal. Uh, obviously we're looking between the Cobain here, TK Monster Shocks, 12 inches of travel. It's the greatest modification that experimental aircraft uh, can offer. Whether you choose TKs or Acmes, what both of those companies are doing for aviation right now are, are pushing the boundaries of our sport. And I wouldn't fly the type of terrain that we're flying without, without a set of shocks on the aircraft. Uh, Tony made these gear legs for me. They're uh, six by three. Uh, they basically have the same footprint as a three by three, but we're up just a little higher. Of course, the clearance is great. Uh, you get a little muscle at the pump, but that doesn't matter much. Really, for me, it's the clearance, it's the ride. Uh, I'm going to show you what's on the back end with the Acme tail stinger, but between the stinger that I have on the back with the Acme and the different setups that I can have, uh, either increasing and or decreasing the angle of attack, that tail shock is incredible. You match that with what I have up front here, I couldn't be happier. This, this right here between the 35s, the Behringer brakes, TK Monster shocks, it's none like it. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, who made the, the tank again? The tank is made up of Cub Crafters. This is a Cub Crafter carbon fiber tank. Okay, so it's a factory option. It is. You know, it's a, it's, I say that and I say that guarded for the sake that it's not necessarily a factory option because it's outsourced by one of their folks up there. And so it's not a true Cub Crafters fuel tank. And I'm drawing a blank on the gentleman that makes them, but yeah, you can go and you get one of these aircraft at Cub Crafters and you can get that tank from them and you can get their guy to build you one. Um, I wish that I had storage in that tank. I wish I could put, you know, a fishing pole, a pair of socks, tennis shoes, whatever. I wish I could put something down there other than just fuel because I'm finding now that I'm flying around with this thing empty most of the time, 24 gallons, I can cruise around for, gosh, three plus hours and we're laughing and have a great day. And then obviously you start looking for fuel. And so with that, I was going on a big trip and I ended up putting that on so I didn't have to worry about fuel going with my little girl. And one thing led to another, I ended up taking my Skywagon. And so uh, anyway, I haven't taken it off. It's only 15 pounds. I kind of dig it. 
Um, so while, while we're at the front of the plane, uh, let's talk about engine and prop. Uh, what did you choose for an option for that? Well, the engine comes with the Titan C340, 180 horsepower. Uh, and then many of us elect either port polish, flow balance. You can go higher compressions if you like. I'm nine to one, uh, pretty much straight of straight out of the factory. Uh, it's that Titan C340, 180 horse. It climbs like a homesick mule. You've been flying around with with me in the back seat, full fuel. We were landing yesterday at 10,000 feet. Check out this landing. Welcome to uh, 9,000 feet Marlette. With that said, you know, we're flying around 10,000 feet. We're both 200 plus pounds. We've got full fuel on board. Obviously we're not running the outboard underneath here, but we've got 24 gallons in a tank, six pounds a gallon, 100 plus 80 pounds of fuel, you and I. We had some baggage and this thing I say, climbs like a homesick mule just with the nine to one on the C340. Uh, the prop, I love my Cato props. I got a box of Kato's back there, three different lengths and sizes and pitch changes. And uh, the reality for me, there's nothing like a Kato. Go buy a Kato. It's smooth, doesn't have a vibration. There's nothing like it. I feel like a cheater running this because I love Craig and I love Nicole. And if you're watching this, I love you guys. Congratulations, Nicole, on your new little baby. Uh, but the whirlwind for my style right this very second, I can change it out real quick. In about 15 minutes, I can change the blade angle. Uh, I put out my protractor, I can figure out what degree is, and I can change from a 14, 15 degree pitch down to a 10, 11, 12, depending upon what my mission is for the day. The speed difference is sometimes 20, 30 miles an hour, depending. But again, you can't get it perfect. However, the only way for me to get this prop perfect is this little decal right here. These guys, DynaVibe. I encourage you to get one because you can literally put some counterweights on the sprinter. You can create that vibration free prop through the DynaVibe dynamic balancing, which is incredible. Um, but again, you know, to all props to all those that need it. I love my Kato. My Whirlwind is convenient. For my everyday flying, it's set up. I could probably be running my Kato, but my Kato, that 8636, I cruise around, it's 75, 80 miles an hour. I put on the, what is it, the 8450, and I get 125, 130. I want something right in the middle, but again, you've gotten to experience, Brian, the type of flying we're doing, and I need that performance now. <laughs> I set this sucker, I think we're set at 12 degrees right now. It's perfect, I can cruise at 100. It's got great stole performance. Uh, yeah, it literally jumps off the ground heavy. It leaps off yeah. the ground heavily yeah. and climbs like a homesick mule. I mean, yeah. that's that's sort of my adjective of the day. But again, uh, it's not a Kato, but I do like my whirlwind ground adjustable. So moving back to the wings here, I don't see any slats, but you've got what on top of your wings for your Extra you know, stole. So my, my wings, I do have a set of uh, Randy's uh, leading edge slats from Carbon Concepts. They'll probably go on at some point. I wish personally that when I was building the aircraft, I'd put brackets inside. Because right now, the way it's set up, I gotta put sheet metal screws into the top of the wing and I'm just not certain I wanna put holes in my beautiful aircraft. We all know that sheet metal screws go in real nice and tight, but over time they get bigger, which means I gotta change out the screws. And I just, you know, those holes will continue to get bigger and then we're dealing with issues. And so I'm just not sure I want to put the slats on. We're already landing and touching down and how much shorter and how much slower do we need to get? So, you know, we'll see. If you're finding value in this video, hit the like button on this video and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Kit Plane Parts, Acme Aero, Edge Performance Engines, and Viking aircraft engines. And be sure to check out the links in the description below for special offers from our affiliates. Let's jump back in. With that, but I do have leading uh, Vortex generators up there. The VGs work great. They give you a, a real good grab on the wind. And uh, you know, again, you have good rudder and aileron authority with those VGs, I dig them. I know that if I put those leading edge slats on there, I'd probably pick up eight miles an hour on the bottom end. Uh, 
but again, I'm just, we'll see. This right here is probably the most expensive mod I've done as of late. This right here is an aluminum flag pole with the Insta360 carbon fiber pole. This right here, we call this in Alaska 100 mile an hour tape. It's actually duct tape. But uh, you know, Insta360, you get that fancy shot where the airplane looks like it's floating. I love all the comments. People are like, oh my God, are you flying with a drone? Sometimes, but usually it's just this fancy little Insta360. You don't pick up the, uh, the duct tape. And then this is for you, Trent. You were giving me a hard time this morning about how you've got a much better way to mount this, but compare my shots to Trent Palmer's. Check it out. <laughs> tail of the aircraft obviously down on the bottom this is my favorite mod back here it's the acme tail stinger anybody see that new video they put out it's not so new now about six months ago where they're towing that stinger behind a truck down this crazy four-wheel drive trail and it's doing brodies and then they smash it and pound it it's awesome you can change three different degrees for your angle of attack for stole, I'll put it right down on the ground and it almost looks like it's sitting on the ground, but believe it or not, you pick up three and a half inches of angle of attack. Uh, right now, I'm at the highest setting. Of course, matched with the gear up front, I still have great angle of attack, but uh, you can also adjust the camber, which is your side to side too. So if it's sitting sideways, sometimes they get a, a shimmy. Most of the time, those tail will shimmy because you're going way too fast, slow your aircraft down. Uh, but again, you can fix a lot of that with camber adjustment in these Acme tail stingers. Uh, back here, we've got top cub, tail feathers, which is a little bigger than your standard carbon cup tail feathers. Um, I can't say much more about it. I love this aircraft. Old number eight for stall drag. Um, and then, of course, you can't put tail feathers on with gap seals. Believe it or not, if you don't have them, that helps. You'll pick up a couple miles an hour just with the gap seals in slow flight. Of course, this type of flying, we're doing power and energy management is critical, and uh, you need every little bit that you can help with. Um, this is pretty much my aircraft that I think that I love. I say I think. I like this baggage compartment, but I wish it's the one and only thing that if I were to do something different, let's just make a big door so we can get in there. Let's put some stuff in here. Because, I mean, my big feet, I can barely put two shoes through there. And so, you know, it's just tight, you know. There's, I can get a lot. I've also done the reverse turtle deck, and so you can maybe do a shot inside where, if you look inside here, I can sleep in this thing the way it's laid out. I can remove that back seat, and because it's a reverse turtle deck, it's got a lot of space for extra baggage. But I just wish we had a big baggage door. You probably remember seeing my Backcountry Super Cub, the Revision 2, and it, it had this big barn door. And uh, that was neat. So I wish if I could do anything different with this aircraft at all, I'd make yourself a big door. Um, again, too, with, with, with the way we fly, we fly so slow. I wouldn't mind having a pair of the performance flaps. But again, that would mean I'd have to bring my wing bigger because right now flaps are great. But man, I can imagine having eight foot, nine foot length of flaps, similar to what Mackie and Goza and those guys are doing with the Backcountry Super Cubs. Big, big flaps, performance flaps. Uh, but again, this does great. We've been flying around 10,000 feet. We're touching down at 35 miles an hour. How much slower do we need to get? Um, and then inside, it's just kind of basic. Comes with the basic World VFR panel. Um, I fly IFR every day. I follow roads, rivers, and river tracks. We did that today. We did that yesterday as well. Um, and it's just, it is what it is. Very basic panel, kept light. Um, other than that, that's pretty much uh, my aircraft. Of course, it has the bass inertia reel harnesses, which are critical for what we're doing. Um, Tell me, uh, just for a minute, what do you bring with you? What is in your pack when you go out doing these stole adventures, these epic stole adventures? I don't leave home without my Garmin, which is sit up front. And again, I plug in, you know, days before I go flying, I put all there so you can have your preset messages. I set up for uh, mapping and tracking so my wife and my close buddies can always follow along and see where I'm at. I also carry my cell phone. Oftentimes in the middle of the desert we don't have reception so I carry a sat phone and then basic toolkit, uh, tire repair kit, and then just basic stuff that in the event something were to happen. And it, we live by the motto, it's not a matter of if but when, you're prepared. And so uh, 
I carry my toolkit, and then obviously I carry in that toolkit also is a bunch of safety gear, just basic, uh, I'm an EMT, and I carry all kinds of first aid stuff, basically to stop bleeding, and things of that nature. Okay, um, and, and briefly, a lot of people want to know uh, the performance specs of this, so like, what is this weigh in at, what's your useful load, and then talk to me about speeds, stall speeds, and then price. Yeah, so with this aircraft, people ask me all the time, you know, so what is it gonna cost to get into something like this? This isn't your, first time buy or your first time off airport aircraft if it was it's a very capable aircraft you know people think that these guys flying these carbon cubs are are hot shots because man they they sure look like they're flying good but really the airplane is is making us look good this isn't cheap you could buy a lamborghini for about half the price um, this aircraft off the floor is about 250 300 bucks the way it's set up that's a lot of money. When I was 20, 30 years old, I thought to myself, how in the heck am I gonna buy a car, let alone, now I own a couple airplanes, let alone a 300 plus thousand dollar aircraft. I'm very lucky, I've worked hard for it. Uh, but again, it is what it is. It's a great aircraft, Cub Crafters makes it. I can't stress how good of a factory job they do. It comes with a warranty. Uh, this aircraft will cruise as it's set up right now. We, without the pod, I'm a thousand three, empty with the pod now i think the pod is exactly 17 empty so call me a thousand twenty empty weight uh it's 1865 uh for max gross and so you know there's plenty of room i challenge people to see if you can put eight nine hundred pounds in your airplane and go fly you're 200 i'm 200 180 we still have what 400 plus in baggage we can put in here that's a lot of gear and so the useful load in these things is incredible uh, low end, you know, people will laugh all the time, but this thing breaks the way it's set up right at about 30, 32 mile an hour. Most Cubs I'm flying break right at around 35. For whatever reason, it feels good right at about, you can count on like a 30, 32, just a buffet, really. Uh, it doesn't even give you an actual break. And then the top ends, the way this is set up, you know, the new FX3s can cruise, you know, with 31 inch bush wheels, they're doing 130, 140 in cruise. I flew that new nose wheel NX Cub, and we were finding speeds of 140 mile an hour with two of us on board full fuel. This one cruises the way it's set up, about 100, that's realistic, that's an honest speed. And that's going at 2350, burning, call it between 6.7 and 7.1, depending upon where my mixture is. Uh, but again, you know, I'm, with this airplane, I'm going nowhere fast. I'm flying the Skywagon, it's a little different. Uh, but for this aircraft, the, the bottom end's right at about 30, top end's right at about 100, the way it's set up. And we got a lot of drag between, you know. Believe it or not, people will think this is excess drag, but I actually picked up speed with this, probably a mile or two. Uh, but the big shocks are, you know, they're big, uh, air brake, the tires are a big air brake, and then you throw everything else out there. You know, we talked about the slats. These are the leading edge slats. And if you've never seen them, they just, they literally go onto the wing, you mount them, and depending upon how slow you get, your angle of attack, they just open up. And as you go faster, they close. But again, uh, how much slower do I need to get? These are awesome, these are so light. I mean, it's feather light. I encourage people to fly with a helmet. The type of flying we're doing, you know, we live on the motto, it's not a matter of if, but when something happens. We're gonna be doing some stole drag stuff here soon. COVID or not, we're gonna figure that out for High Sierra. Maybe doing a closed course so that all these racers can practice. Uh, and then we're just doing our basic flight training and whatnot. I wanna take the stole show on the road and do uh, some more of that. We had so much planned for this summer and then of course everything sort of went crazy on us. All right, Kevin, well, appreciate the hangar tour today and dive a little bit deeper into the particulars of your aircraft. Thanks for coming, Brian. I appreciate having you guys. And uh, if you haven't yet, ring the little ding -a right here, and hit that little button, subscribe. Don't go away just yet. In a future episode, Kevin takes me flying in the backcountry in his Carbon Cub FX. Remember to like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.